take two. Can you hear us? Everybody wants to be the best. Clearly, based on today, we are striving hard to be the worst. Uh, sound difficulties. Don't know what it was, but... Don't know if you can hear us. We think we are back up and running. We think everything is going well. Oh, um... I believe that we have everything fixed. Really, what it took was me pounding on the table a bunch of times, getting frustrated with Morgan for no exact reason, and... We are back. Dropping a bunch of f bombs. I did drop a couple of f bombs. Sorry, you guys no couldn't uh, couldn't hear those. But right. when it comes down to it, it came down to uh, basically restarting. Yeah, I unplugged and plugged back in a bunch of stuff too. So we're gonna restart the show. Uh, if you want to hear about more ranting and raving, I'll share that with you later. But Granddaddy contest coming later, Morgan. We're excited about that. We have a really good contest for people. Um, we briefly mentioned it in our error episode, as I'll yes. call it. Uh, we have a contest dropping on Friday of this mm -hmm. week, celebrating some Independence Day. We're going to be giving away this Cobra Aerojet driver. It's done in blue, red accents. It's awesome. If you can see the face for those following on YouTube, it's got the volition symbol, dead center, laser etch in there. Uh, this is going to be on Twitter and Facebook simultaneously. Uh, no. Or sorry, Twitter and Instagram simultaneously. Correct. Hey, listen, they own it. I was close. Very close, yes. Um, but yeah, Twitter and Instagram simultaneously. It comes complete with this shaft. We are oh, not just I giving a hit. Oh, I sure that was taking something nope. out. That is Project X Hazardous, uh, Lampkin Grip. So you guys are all set, the lucky winner. But we will have that dropping on Friday. If you've been on the forum, you might have seen it. We had a Raid V-Man, V-Golf Man's... <laughs> yes. uh, Closet contest. It was kind of fun. Obviously, a really limited contest because well, A, it's size, size specific. Yeah. Um, but he had some new to him shirts from the PGA show that we did when he was working with us at the mm -hmm. show. Uh, with the giant oversized THP logo. <laughs> where was massive. They were called the tour logo because yeah. it's so large. Um, but they're cool, they're fun. And uh Perry Ellis did that for us. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're giving those away. V golf man is in there answering the fitting questions. So if you posted one, jump back in there, he's really detailed. There's a lot of really good information. So you're not going to want to miss that. I feel like I've done a, a bunch of the housekeeping, you know, to start out the show, but I wanted to talk about housekeeping, which is how many lists do you subscribe to over the course of a year? I, I don't. Well, I, I don't I mean we definitely get added to quite well, a few. Well, I was going to say I get added to them. I don't subscribe to them. I mis I mysteriously show up on them. Yeah, it's you know, pretty amazing. And I'll be honest, I've subscribed to a few, you know, hey, do you want to save 25% on your first order? I literally oh, just did that because I uh That's true. I do that. I, I we ordered a bunch of t-shirts, um some cool stuff that we'll be showing off on the show, I'm sure. I did that for barbecue rubs. Yeah, so yeah. you know, we you do but the unsubscribe, like you never unsubscribe. You always just click delete. It's so it's so easy to just click delete. But no. when you finally do unsubscribe, it's, it's the greatest cool. feeling. It's so good. And then come the holidays, how how many do you realize you subscribe to over the course of the year when they're sending out the email list? Or how many times has your email been sold? Yeah, I mean that's definitely a part of it because, too. Yeah, but yeah, I've been on a tear lately. I have unsubscribed to so many email lists, and it has been. The most fulfilling, satisfying. I did feeling two this ever. morning, and it felt pretty darn good. Did also, or did two? The number no, two. The number two. Gotcha. Um, the irony being, after I unsubscribed, they then emailed me again to, to tell say, me I'm unsubscribed. I was yeah. like, "Stop! That's yeah. the whole point of of, of unsubscribing." I, I, I yeah. caught myself. At least you can. The worst ones back me up. People are when you try to unsubscribe to something and you click the unsubscribe and then it takes you to an email. You're supposed to email to unsubscribe. Yeah. Or, uh, or no. you click on the thing that's saying unsubscribe and there's nothing there. You can't email or we don't yeah. have your email address. And yeah, I hate when they say you need to enter your email address to unsubscribe. I feel like that's a scam somehow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a scam. Yeah. That's how they get you. Yeah. I don't like that. Um, so we're going to jump in. We have a lot to cover this week. We do. We're going to jump into some THP or questions we yes. got right away. If you haven't, if you want to get questions answered, be it the business of THP, the golf equipment world, golfing in general, playing golf, whatever you want to say, people get pretty offended by that. Um, do so uh, on the THP forum. We're happy to answer everything. We are open book and transparent as possible. Um, but we got some good ones this week and I'm going to kick it off with 
a piece of equipment that was doomed from the start due to the original messaging or marketing? That's a good question. I liked it. And the first one immediately comes to mind to me is the TaylorMade jet speed. Mm -hmm. Like it was doomed from the beginning. The media trip was cool. Private jet to Las Vegas, the whole nine yards. And then the freaking puppets came out and the speed police uh, that was absolutely doomed at the beginning. Even if the driver was good, bad or indifferent, didn't matter. They had no chance. It's because puppets are terrible. Yeah. The, the, the speed police marionette, seeing a marionette and puppet of Sergio Garcia and Jason day did not have, uh, did not work for me. It's what's the, the gif. That's a no for me, dog. (laughs) I don't really know what that's from, but, um, it's the, from American Idol. Yeah, that one. When you start out your messaging on a product and it just comes off as creepy. Uh, yeah, that, that didn't work for me. Agreed. Um, there's been a lot. Uh, the the turbulators from Ping, I thought was doomed from the beginning. And based on the fact that when that was their entire story, you know, that was the, the focal point. The product didn't move too well. Right. That was a tough one. When they started focusing on other things, it did. They started selling more drivers again. So. I think that, that that those are two that stand out originally. Um, the latest from Cleveland didn't resonate with a lot of our audience, where it was uh, more about having fun and everybody out there oh, was very, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just call it California vibe. Yes. Didn't work. And I'll say there's two others that jumped to my mind right away. And I bet the comments are filled with them. I can't see those right now. No, not yet. Um there's two that jump to my mind right at the forefront. The first, the baller box by Wilson is the fucking worst, uh, the effing worst. You did that history. one on purpose. No, I didn't. I think you did. In the history of uh, golf models, I'll say, to have the, you buy more, most people buy more, save more. No, yeah, buy, buy more. more save on shipping, combine shipping. No. Nope, not in that case. Buy more, spend more uh, across the board. And uh, the latest from Adams is kind of weird. It's also a play. It seems like they're just marketing towards the transfusion crowd, as I like to say. Well, hey, if you know your audience. Yeah. And maybe it works. Maybe it so. does. But those are the, the ones that jump out Im- immediately to me. Mm-hmm. Um, different brands really go about it. You have brands that go really high tech with the messaging. You have brands that go more immediate access on tour. Mm-hmm. You have brands like Nike that didn't resonate because all they did is they didn't talk tech until it was too late. They just went right to the tour player. They marketed the golf equipment like they had been marketing golf shoes Mm -hmm. or uh, I'm sorry, NBA shoes, basketball shoes. So it didn't really work. It's tough though, because if you don't know who your audience is or you think you know who your audience is and it turns out that you don't, it doesn't work. And and you know, know? there's been good messaging that's fallen flat. Yeah. Uh, You know, I thought, uh, the one from a few years ago by Cobra with zero CG was really good messaging. Now you had to explain a lot for people to understand. See, that's it. the problem is I think that like the idea behind the tech messaging is always great, but unless it's done in like the most basic layman's yeah. terms, it goes over most people's head and it's just lost. Yeah. And you know, it's an interesting thing about that is a couple of years prior, Taylor made had come out with the SLDR driver and it was really the first time companies were talking about center of gravity Mm -hmm. um, so openly in their messaging. And it was all about moving the weight forward and and low. In that case, it wasn't really that low, but moving the weight forward. Um, And that was really, and then all of a sudden, everybody on the internet became an expert in center of gravity and where it goes and things like that. And the the byproduct of that, of the illustrations that TaylorMade did were brilliant because they showed the CG sliding all the way forward. When in reality, the center of gravity was only moving a couple of millimeters. Right. But um, yeah, so I, I think messaging is the most important thing, but it's very hard to get right. Even if your message is good, it has to resonate with the audience. If you hear a doorbell ringing in the <laughs> background at our office, there are children selling items and they keep <laughs> ringing the doorbell and we explained we'll be to them after the show. Yes. But that was, uh, if, if you hear a doorbell in the background, that's why I'm pretty sure the mic will yeah, pick it up. Nobody's hearing that. wanted to say that anyway, just in case we have uh, Arrow next to you there. You can kind of see the top of him if you're watching on YouTube, if he starts barking. There. Um, so jumping into something else about messaging. Yes. I have not received a crazy you rant from no. the number two striker in the state of Ohio in several weeks. I know. And I, I was explaining to you that 
is it weird? I kind of miss it. Personally, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that's super weird, and you should be very happy that it's not happening anymore. It's you know, there was a, a four or five week stretch, and we shared a couple of the emails on here. Yeah, not a single one was ever responded to, by the way. But we shared a couple of the emails on here that I was getting them every week. And it became like a one of those. Do you remember those books as you were a kid? You like pick the pick how it was going to finish. No, no, you're probably too old, too young, too old, too young. Yeah. Um, but you had to like pick your journey, uh-huh. so to speak. No. And I, I, I never picked my journey, so I feel like it just kind of ended. But I, I kind of now I want to go back and respond to one and say like, oh, sorry, I found this in the spam folder. No, you're still you're still spam. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that, obviously. Right. Um, does anybody else feel that way? If you had a stalker and that stalker just went away or got arrested, would you miss your stalker? <laughs> I don't think so. I, maybe I'm alone there. Yeah. Um, next THP question was an interesting one, a little bit more personal. Okay. Um, if I could get a private lesson, me personally, because mm-hmm. my game is in F and shambles mm-hmm. from any tour player, past or present, who would it be? And I think the obvious answers are like Tiger or Phil or, you know, the, the big names. And I'm going to go off the deep end. Okay. The person's name is Tom Pertzer. Tom Pertzer. Yeah. Spell that. P-U-R-T-Z-E-R. Okay. And I've said for years that I thought Tom Pertzer had the best golf swing in the history of golf. Better than Freddie Couples. Yes. Okay. Um, Technically. You know, Fred right. has got the best motion and the smoothest. Right. And the, the one that looks the prettiest. Okay. But Tom Pertzer had the best golf swing in the history of golf to me. And so I, I would go after that one. There's others um, that obviously jump to mind, you know, but Tom Pertzer would be it. And for all I know, he's giving lessons right now. I have no idea. I, you know, he was a tour player for many years. He's not, obviously. He's probably in his 60s or 70s now. Yeah. I I, maybe I could get a lesson from Tom Pertzer. Tom, if, if Tom's listening, I, I'd love a lesson. I didn't know that Tom was like alive i didn't know like, how you old didn't he, know was. he was actually a thing right, right. Yeah. so i didn't know if he was like way past yeah so tom pertzer would be the answer and i'm sure that the comments will be filled with things like Paige, yep Baranek we got one and nelly corda yep we got that too because our audience are mm-hmm. effing perverts oh, and disgusting okay a lot of people to be fair a lot of people who said ben hogan um that's a good one he's 71 by the way Tom Pertzer? Yes. Look at that. Yes. For for what I want to say is, I, I really do believe these THPers have this thing of they're going to go get a lesson from Paige Spranick and they're she's not going to see the guy walk into the range and be like, oh, look, size couch cover. I'm in love. <laughs> like, that's not what happens. <laughs> but they're picturing like, I'm not, you know yeah. what? We're live on air. I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. I'm going to keep that to she's myself. Like, do they sell that size in the pro shop? No. Or do you special order that because they stitch two shirts together? Yeah. Lydia Co. I'm oh, just... no, I don't like her swing. No. I like Lydia Ko. She's very nice, but no. I'm just going to now I'm just... um, Max Homa. Rose Zang. Homa. I always say Homa every yeah. time. Um, She's got an unbelievable golf swing. Yes. Yeah. Max Homa. I feel like he'd make fun of me a lot. Um, He's from our tribe. You know, yes. I, I appreciate Max. I actually love watching his game, especially when his putter's hot. But I feel like he'd be pretty cruel right now. <laughs> so we're going to skip that one. Um, keep leaving your comments because I'm really curious what people think. And if your comment is Paige or Nelly Corda or something like that, first of all, don't be a chomo. Like that's <laughs> it's so wrong. Payne Stewart, Patty Payne had a good one. Yeah, there's there's some good ones. Patty Harrington had a great golf swing. <laughs> um, for those listening, we're going through Morgan. I'm going reading the, the comments. comments. Yeah. Tiger, Adam Scott. A couple people said Adam Scott, too. Adam Scott's got a beautiful golf swing. You can actually learn Adam Scott's golf swing. Butch Harmon gives lessons. That's true. You know, yeah. you, can, you can do that. Yeah. Um, but that's mine. Tom Pertzer, mm-hmm. apparently 71. If everybody – is he in the Ponte Vedra area? Because I might have to go <laughs> pay him a visit. No idea. Um, so Tom Pertzer would be mine. Uh, we mentioned we're doing a couple of form testing for yes. people who want to get better, speaking of that. Yep. Uh, I'm going to give out the first one now. The second one will come later in the show. The first one, not hard to figure out from the graphic. We're going to do the Callaway CB wedges, and I forgot it. It's in the tech studio. Would you like to go get it? No. Okay. But uh, people have seen it. I, I posted some in-hand pictures on social media as well as on the forum. We are going to select five people to uh, get a wedge from Callaway. They're going to join uh, our writer, James. James yes. is going to be joining them yes. on the testing, the form testing. And uh, 
we're going to ask people to really put them through the test because so the Callaway CB wedge is kind of unique in that it's not unique in that they're making a forgiving wedge. Hi, era. Um, it's unique in that it changed so much from the first iteration mm -hmm. The you know, the M the Mac daddy CB came out a few years ago. People really liked it. I thought it was a really good design. I struggled with the feel a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, this one did not. They went urethane microspheres, which is the most fascinating backstory. I won't go into that in this show. But if you ever want to learn, urethane microspheres, let me just say, it's not what you think they are. When James you, just said magical microspheres. Yeah. When you think of urethane microspheres, you think of what other companies are doing and shooting goo into the iron heads to create a a filler, a dense feel, so you don't get harsh vibrations. Urethane microspheres are not that at all. They are, are, are a patented technology. They, they're, the original use came from another industry way outside of golf. The fact that they're being used in golf club heads is completely fascinating, different than what they were originally designed for. And it is 1,000% different than the shooting the goo that a couple of other companies do. Let's just say the words shooting goo. Yeah. Are getting I, some comments. I, I'm shocked. Yes. With the, they're with getting... the audience <laughs> trying to pick uh, Paige Sporanic as their swing coach. Yes. Shooting I'm goo. I'm going to get some weird questions. Yes. Getting some comments. comments. Shocked. Um, so we're going to kick that off. That one kicks off on Friday. Sign ups. You'll do join James. Um, and check out his article. You check out the preview article. Uh, you're going to have to to be able to answer the questions <laughs> to sign up for the forum testing. But that'll drop on our forum tomorrow. Uh, Friday. Friday. I, I'm getting my day screwed I know, up. It's been too. a I, long week. I keep thinking it's Thursday, but it's only Wednesday. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. Um, jumping back to THP or questions. Yes. This is a pretty deep one, and I won't go too deep on the topic, but they asked about OEMs moving to collaborative and, you know, kind of advertising rather than a tour player sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And I think the question, the genesis of the question is influencers versus tour players in a nutshell, whether it's the YouTube crowd of good, good, and a couple others sure. versus Bryson. Bad example in Bryson because no OEM is touching him currently. And when his contract came up, Cobra did not renew him. It wasn't the other way around. Bridgestone cut ties with him as well. Mm -hmm. um, if there was no live though, would that happen? With Cobra? Yes. I believe so personally. Yes. Right. Uh, with Bridgestone, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, they they made their move and put their stake in the ground to stick with the PGA Tour, and that and that's what they did. Um, but in a we all we constantly hear, I don't care what's used on tour. Right. If anything in the last two weeks has shown <laughs> us, yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah. Uh, the jailbird putter mm -hmm. from Odyssey was so in demand that it's not out yet mm -hmm. pre-order went today and it's already already all negative reviews because they didn't make left-handers now let's backtrack this putter originally came out i want to say in 2014 i think so um going off memory if i'm wrong by a year don't hold it against right. me right don't quote you on that you and i were some of the first to ever see it uh-huh when we were visiting there and I then the granddaddy crew got it we both actually really liked it we didn't think we were because we both used a number seven yes this was kind of closed off, but it was available for left-handers back then. Uh -huh. You could have bought one. You didn't. Nope. And that's why it went away. Not just because of left-handers, but right. you know, eventually companies have to cut certain models. Obviously. There's only so many SKUs you can have in a store. Yeah, absolutely. But it, the idea that tour players don't influence and now we're seeing this come back is crazy. Right. I have not seen something like this. And we were talking about it with a few people in the banter thread on our forum since I want to say the super stroke putter that Jason Duffner had on to win the PGA yes. championship. Literally nobody had a super stroke putter. No grip. He wins the PGA championship and within seven days next week on tour, there were like 50 in play. Yep. I remember that. You could find him in stores. Then you could, they were everywhere, including yours truly who ordered one. Yeah. Well, even and this is kind of don't mind the audience as I take a swig. Oh, and this kind of goes back a little bit, but do you remember when Furick won with a yes putter way back when? And people were all of a sudden asking about yes, even yeah. though the company doesn't exist. It didn't even anymore. exist anymore, exactly. So yeah, yeah there's been a few that uh, the R11 driver, the mm -hmm. white driver head. Uh, what a crazy influence that yep, had! Exactly, the Superstroke putter grip. 
Um, there's been many, yeah. you know, paradigm winning right out of the gate. Like they did Huge. Is, was pretty nuts. Yeah. Um, the, the easy one mm. pro V one golf balls. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's the, the low hanging fruit of this story, but it is yeah. the genesis no, of true, the though. story. It's not a knock on them equipment wise. The pro oh, V one's no. a, a fine golf ball, but if it wasn't the most used on tour and it wasn't labeled as the most used on tour, would it have a dominant spot? My gut feeling says I'm not sure. Well, but it also has a huge green grass. It does. But again, would presence, all those things, presence, yeah, would all those things for. happen? Generally know. speaking, most used on tour in certain, in most categories leads to yeah. quite a bit of sense. However, the one time that doesn't play a role is Nike and Tiger for equipment. Yeah. I mean, it, for whatever not most reason. used by a long shot. Um, Cause not most used on tour, just the number one player was playing those clubs and they still couldn't sell those clubs. No, that's very that was true. like a one caveat for whatever reason. And, and you know, that's a little sidebar. That's pretty interesting. If you look at a guy like Scotty Scheffler, let's say, who's a fantastic player, they can see arrow on the yeah. screen there looking back at us, yeah. making another TV uh, appearance. Um, is Scotty Scheffler a real marketable guy? He's dominant. I mean, if he could putt, he would have won basically every tournament. In yeah, the but last he lost two months. the putter, but he's he boring as hell. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like him. I like him too, but yeah. it doesn't change the fact that he's boring as hell. He's, he's boring. Yeah, he's he. Well, I'll, I wouldn't say boring. I'll call him vanilla. Yeah, vanilla. That's um, a great way of putting it. He's just he goes out, he does his thing, and that's it. Like, there's just not a lot of you see like very little emotion, which I guess is also polarizing because some people love that, some people hate. Yeah, it. that's true. I don't know. Um, but you know, I don't think people realize he's got a pretty mixed bag. Even though he's signed by by, by Taylor Made, mm -hmm. um, he's got a very mixed bag. Yeah. His wedges aren't Taylor Made. His ball's not Taylor Made. His driver is Taylor Made. His putter is not. So you know what? One of the most this random thought that I just had. One of the most fascinating things that I learned years ago was how many people who had deals, but it wasn't like a full fourteen club deal, were playing Tour Edge Three Woods. Yeah, it's not really the case now, no, which but, is funny because they make an incredible fairway wood still. Yeah, but yeah that maybe not three woods, but fairway woods. Fairway Do you remember woods. that? Oh, yeah. There was a time when we were out at, I want to say it was the Bay Hill tournament. I think it was Bay Hill. I think and that's exactly right. we were visiting all the different tour vans, and they were doing some equipment. And there was a gentleman, I'm not going to say his name because he still works on the, on the tour truck yeah. for one of the large OEMs, was trying everything to get the exotics fairy wood out of this tour player's bag and they could not do it they no. couldn't beat it no and they were frustrated and everything else but we saw it, it that was in almost every tour player's bag this, we were talking this to. was way back when like brian gay was kind yep. of was i wouldn't say dominant but he no was but winning. he, he, he was won winning. He yeah was winning. And and here he had won, won yeah exactly and it was sort of like we noticed it more and more over it was just some random thing so anyway. To going back to the question is tour player versus influencer. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's an even or. I think it's both. I, mean, it, I, I think that's a generational thing. I think it is too, but I still view things and maybe I'm wrong. I, who knows? Data will suggest that I'm both right and wrong. Mm -hmm. That while engagement is king when it comes to engagement brings trial, trial brings price. So the trial brings purchase. So if people are engaging about a product, odds are people are going to want to try that product. And if they want to try that product and it's good and it lives up to what the company is putting out, they might buy that product. Mm -hmm. That works on a younger audience. The older audience, who I still believe buys a lot of golf equipment, doesn't really follow that model as much. So to me, I think it, one they go hand in hand together. Um, you know, I, I don't view... TH peers and stuff as influencers, even though they are as a community, especially as tied together. So, you know, we work with all the, the manufacturers and we're proud of the ones that we call partners that we select to work with our, with our community. And I think that collectively that's the same thing. Um, input matters mm -hmm. and engagement matters and conversation matters and good, bad, and indifferent feedback matters. But, not talking about it also matters. So if you find a influencer that will just post a picture and move on or shoot a video and move on, that's not really what most manufacturers would be looking for. Right. Cause they want actual conversation. They want conversation it. about it. They want people talking about it. And yes, in turn, they're looking for sales, but it's not looking at it strictly as a sales tool. That's more of an affiliate model. 
when you go to a website, golf or otherwise, and somewhere in there, there's a disclaimer that says, by clicking the links here, or we might often recommend something that we get paid to do. And it's always in small print and things like that. That's called an affiliate program. Uh, we don't partake in this. No. Um, I, I think it, I've always said, and I tell people this who email us every day asking if we'll do an affiliate program, that uh, it blurs the line a little bit between media and salesperson. Right. And I'm not interested in that. No, we're happy to do a review on whatever your Correct. product is. Um, now, I'm not knocking companies that do most of the no. golf websites. And by most, I mean all uh, are doing affiliate programs where they are paid if you click the link and buy from them. And listen, there's nothing, that's their thing. Yeah. It's just not our thing. No. So um, I think that that's a different model from just the influencer. Influencers, you'll see that you might follow, might have a coupon code or whatever. That's usually an affiliate program and they're going to, you know, get paid for that. Um, for the record, if we have a coupon code, for like a discount on something on a golf product, you it, know, we it's not, not an affiliate. An affiliate. Yeah, we don't uh, get anything no. for it. And if we do, we it'll be posted on our form and openly state right there. We might have a couple for the podcast only, right? That we exactly. Do, I was just like about our to sunscreen. Say. Yeah, but we actually sought out to them. Yeah, we actually really liked the product. Um, so I hope that answers your question. I'm not sure if you have a follow up or you want to follow up on that. Post it in the forum thread. I'm happy to dive in a little deeper. Sometimes it's easier for me to type it out. But to answer the question, yes, they are not ignoring the influencer model, but they're definitely not sleeping on the tour model mm -hmm. as we've seen uh, over the next over the last couple of weeks. I had a conversation with somebody this morning mm -hmm. about playing golf at certain times of day. And I don't, is there a perfect time of day to golf? I think it depends on the person. And it's region specific, obviously. But obviously. Um, I have two. Well, I don't play golf anymore. But when I did, I had two preferred times. It was either early in the morning or I liked like three o'clock. Yeah. Um, especially three o'clock when like nobody was out there because I would go out by myself. Right. And I loved it, even though I could never figure out where the ball is going. I couldn't tell you how many times I lost balls because I just I can't see it. Like I hit the ball and I've, I directionally I have an idea, but I never can exactly find out like where it's going. So, but those would be my two favorite times. Yeah, I'm a, I used to be the, I, I as early, you may have the first tee time. Right. You know. I, but there's always complications with that. Yeah. Well, the biggest complication is it's really wet. Right. It's really wet. Or if you're somewhere cold, you have frost delay. Right. So I kind of shied away from that. And, you know, part of it also is that humbled and blessed that we don't, I'm not going to a public course on a Saturday or Sunday to jump in on a foursome. Right. Um, you know, it's normally at the dormy, one of the dormy clubs or back when we were in Nashville, our club there was private. Um, 9 30, 10 o'clock, the water's finally gone. The grass is like just there. The sun is coming out, mm -hmm. but you can really get some pretty extreme temperatures there depending on where you are as well. Yes. Uh, in Florida, that, that midday time, doesn't bother me as much while it's super hot. A lot of the humidity is burned off. Hmm, sure. So to me, it's not like that damp early morning, late afternoon. I would agree with you there. Gnats everywhere kind of feeling. I think the gnats are always there, but yes, I agree with you. It's not quite as, yeah, I won't use the M word that you don't like, no, but I will just say it's a little more wet that, in the morning. That, that word is disgusting. <laughs> Um, so what is, what is your favorite time to play? You know, I think I, for instance, if I lived in Arizona or in Phoenix area, I'd want to play first thing in the morning, first thing in the morning, or as the sun is, it's getting a little bit later yeah. because it definitely cools down. Um, a lot of people said that they like the twilight time. Yeah, I, I get that. I think that, but in, it's like a twilight nine. That's what a lot of people have yeah, said. And we used to do that in Nashville all the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think that's a good one. Do um, sweeper all the time or yeah, all the way. Let us know. Keep coming. Uh, I'm curious what people uh late afternoon, twilight, eight thirty. Uh, yeah. I, I I'm I'm always curious about that stuff. Yeah. Um this is not a segue. So speaking of curiosity, no. <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> earlier this year, uh we started getting more and more consumer launch monitors come out. Uh -huh. And one of the you know, we've had them. You know, SkyTrack Plus is now out, Rap Soto's out, the Garmin G. God, that device is freaking terrible. But it, there's a lot of really good devices. Yeah, there, there are. Um, Rapsodo came out and had some issues early on mm -hmm. with some connectivity. Um, I, I spoke to them earlier today. A lot of that's behind them. They still think there are some people who 
who are struggling a bit. They're working on getting those fixed. But, you know, we said we have a second forum testing and, you know, we're big fans of Sim Golf at home. So we're going to do, we got with Rapsodo and we're going to do Rapsodo devices for five people on THP. I'm super excited about um, that. After talking that, to them today, I'm super excited about their timeline and what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So I, I will first want to say, we keep getting the question, is the next guy is the next Rapsodo device coming that's going to change everything? They just released this one five months ago. Yeah, and you know when they had their issues, they could have just been like thrown in the towel, like whatever. yeah, move on. Yeah, or just told people like we've seen that before. Yeah, or just say like deal with it. We'll move on to the next version. And but they didn't. No, they they we they are in this for the long haul. Yeah, the original I appreciated that. the original device is not out of stock, out of line. It's sticking. They're not getting rid of it. Right. This device they have grand plans for, mm-hmm. and a lot is coming. So at the price point. I'm always intrigued. Six ninety nine gets you a launch monitor to start playing golf at home, working on your game. Yeah, their hardware obviously can work. The the hardware they make the device for SkyTrack. Yeah, so it's exciting. Um, but they were very open. Hey, let's put it in the hands of some form members and let's do some form testing. Here's what we're going to tell you, and this is coming out Wednesday of next week. Number one. I need that little graphic. One. I know. You must have space in your house. Well, this obviously. is not going to be just a test outdoors thing. So that's the first thing. Yeah. You're Number not- two, got to be an Albatross Club member. Fair. You know, we want you to have skin in the game so you're not getting your device and taking off. Yeah. Seems like a pretty easy thing. We do a lot of testing on THP and we want people to be able to try things out and continue to and be around. Number three, make the commitment to freaking review it. If your plan is to drop in once a week and say, working great, here's a picture, or use Sim Golf for a half hour yesterday with my son, that's not what we're looking for. No. We want you to dive in. We want you to use the practice modes. We want you to play Sim Golf. We want you to do all these things and put it through its paces because there are tens of thousands of people who are going to find and see that forum thread that are looking for your feedback. Well, And be honest because the company is going to read it. So if there's things that are working great, awesome. If there are things that there's some glitches to, post about it. Yeah, and You you can't fix things you don't know are wrong. And we spoke to Rapsoda today and they are going to be a part of the forum thread as well to if people have problems or questions, they're going to jump in. So this is not a thing for, and we have a lot of testing coming up. Obviously, we've just named two, but we have a lot. This is not going to be something where if you are a casual forum member that's going to make a post once a week, listen, we love that. We love all forum members, but we're looking for the active. And I'm excited to see this because we know there were some early adopters that struggled, but we think that this is going to be exciting and ready to go. Um, Somebody asked if you really need 16 feet. Do you... (sighs) It's going to be around there. No. The answer is no. Okay. Um, It's got to be behind you, and you need to have a space to hit into a net or screen. So I think in a perfect world, 15, 16 feet, yes. Ryan we- Hawk said 16 feet for sure, in his opinion. Yeah, and, and Ryan's put in a, a ton of time with this thing, probably more than most. Um, So at 15 would be the bare minimum. This is set up for the garage sim crew. Yeah. For those that haven't followed our garage simulator crew are people who want to play golf at home. So. Agreed. So somebody else said, what is to your left? I don't know what they're talking about. To my left? I'm assuming it's just your water bottle. My water bottle? I'm guessing that's what that is. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. I think that's what um, that is. So form testing coming up. It'll yes. be a week from today after the holidays. Uh, we don't want to drop this on a Monday. No, the day that's before silly. July 4th. Yeah, enjoy your holidays. Um, so we're excited about that one. I was having a conversation with a couple of form members recently, and then I had it again with a friend of mine mm-hmm. in the industry about losing your swing. Yes. And my... Your perils have been Yeah, I, I've well talked documented. about that plenty. Um, I'm borderline terrible at this point. Uh, I did hit some balls in the sim, sent it off to my instructor. He said things are looking a little better. So how does that make you feel? <laughs> We're having like a, a I need a to sit down on the couch and, and you know sit down and discuss it. But um, I this happens in stages, and it really happens to everybody. You know, from the tour player on down. I mean, oh yeah. Whether it's 
putting yips or losing your we iron. We just game. said Scheffler lost his putter. Yeah. You know, he's just, at, at, at his level. Yeah. Yeah. It's a perfect example of it. So losing your swing is something I always say, take the break. Yeah. Two weeks. Don't even, don't even look at your golf clubs. Mm -mm. Two weeks. Then go back, roll some putts, some short game and go from there. If you're taking an extended break away from golf, be it injury or anything else, and you plan to just pick up and go, and then you want to get into something competitively, let's say it's a THP event, or let's say it's a local league, whatever you're doing, go get a lesson. Yeah. Have a teacher look at you. Uh, I implore people to do that. I didn't do it, and then I did do it, and the difference was night and day. Yeah, because here's the problem. The first time you go out, you're going to play great. You always play great after a yeah. break. Always. And then it all falls apart. All and anytime falls there's any apart. sort of pressure, it definitely crumbles. Yes, exactly. So like you might go out there and play great the first day, but then after that, it's going to be a disaster. Yeah. I mean, I shouldn't say that, but it, no, it does. historically, it's a disaster well, after that. Most golfers don't have the perfect swing. Right. So it, it's timing. Yeah, it's repetition too. It's like yeah. Just... So when you get away from it, you come back, the timing falls into sync a few mm -hmm. times. Your body's not really trying to make those same flaws you were Your doing before. Your brain kind of isn't really thinking. Yeah. It's kind of out there having fun. Then the brain starts happening. And then, and then the next round, things go sideways. Yes. And God forbid you have to play 27 or 18 back-to-back -back oh. days or something like that. You're screwed. 27 sounds horrible. Go have somebody take a look at your swing. Yeah. You're going to enjoy it so much more. Oh, yeah. Um, the cost isn't high for a, a single lesson or a diagnostic or anything yeah, like that. And you don't have to go through like a whole swing change. No. And I think that that's one of the biggest misnomers about lessons yes. is I don't, I, I know I suck at golf. I'm fine with that. I don't want to rebuild my swing. You don't have to. Half the time, it's nothing more than just fixing your grip. Yeah. The, the initial setup is a huge one. Yeah. Using an example, like most golfers are over the top. Mm -hmm. That's not rebuilding your whole swing. No. Not at all. If you play a giant slice, that's not rebuilding your swing. That's literally changing one part of your path. Yeah. You can have that fixed relatively quickly if you put in a, a small bit of work with a single lesson. Yeah, exactly. So I always say do that. A little touch up here and there, mm -hmm. you know, a little tune up. Yeah, tune up. That's yeah. good. I like that. So we've been, last week we talked about the health and nutrition challenge. Yes. And we've been doing it now for a week the two of us um two weeks, two weeks. has right? it been two weeks where every single thing we eat we post in yeah. in the thread uh i guess we did just talk about it last week yeah we have been doing it kind you, of yes. yeah it's been going pretty well yeah we actually um, stayed home all weekend yeah, we didn't even and go out to eat we didn't i was really proud of us yeah that's probably going to change but um <laughs> okay we want others to join I, yeah. thanks to the thpers who have joined in yeah that's you know, been great if nothing else, and I think four member Hibbs posted in there, it's about being held accountable. Yeah. Um, now he said, I think I'm going to go to Jimmy John's for a sandwich. And I said, and myself <laughs> and others said, why don't you order a salad or this and right, that? Right now. And then next thing you know, he made a post, Jimmy John sub. <laughs> well, and I'm also going to say he also hasn't been posting in there recently. So there is that. Perhaps he skipped out on it. I think so. I think there's it, been only a couple if people. If we looked who, at the scoreboard, it said THP challenge Hibs. It would be THP challenge it, had the one next to it. Yeah. I think you and I are the only ones really consistently posting in there. I yeah. Think, every meal. Every meal. Yeah. There, I shouldn't say you I, and I are the people only have ones. jobs. Oh, yeah. You know, we're the only ones. There's a few that are posting consistently, but not a lot. Not a lot. Yeah. It fell off pretty quickly this time, which I understand. I do. It's, it's time consuming. I, I'm, I'm throwing down the challenge to Hibs. Okay. That, to do it for seven days straight, strict. He doesn't have to say strict forever. Seven days straight. I think he's traveling. Uh, if he is, he can't do it. But I'm throwing down the challenge to forum member Hibbs. Okay. If he does seven days straight, I'll do seven days straight. Every single thing posted. Let's see what he comes back with. Yeah. Yeah, Adam, I know that you're posting. I've been watching your posts. Um. So are you enjoying the challenge? Personally, yeah. I like it because it keeps me accountable. Although weirdly enough, and you even said this to me last night, like if you say you're not hungry, I've not been hungry for dinner. Yeah, that's weird. It's been super weird. So like, I'm not somebody who's not hungry. We've talked about this on the show. And the last couple of nights, like I just haven't eaten dinner. Like I just have, I, like, am not hungry. You're like, what are you having for dinner? I'm like, nothing. And then last night he said, you say you're not hungry. Yeah. Say whatever. So I was like, I'm I just not going to say anything at all then. 
Well, we're talking food. Yep. Give everybody your recipe. Okay. I have a recipe this week. Yes, I know I'm going to switch. Okay. So this recipe is, it sounds weird. I'm not going to lie. It's going to sound really weird. You're going to hear the ingredients. You're going to be like, what the hell? But it tastes really good. And it's super versatile. You can put it on. So it's called firecracker ground beef. I used ground bison personally because that's what I had. I've not tried it with turkey. I cannot speak to whether or not it would be good. I don't think it would be personally. I'm not saying it won't. I'm just saying I think beef is going to be your better option here. Um, it uses buffalo sauce and rice vinegar. So it's like Asian and buffalo. I know it sounds weird. Trust me on it, though. It's really good. You can do it on rice. That's what I did. Or you could do it with noodles. You could do it as like a stir fry. You could do it as like a lettuce wrap if you wanted to. Like seriously, there's so many different options. And it takes 15 minutes to cook. Like it's stupid easy to make. And it makes great leftovers. It's a little spicy, but not too spicy. And it calls for brown sugar. I used like the Swerve brown sugar substitute so that it was a little bit lower in like actual like sugar. Um, but use whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Uh, anyhow, I have it all ready to go. So I will post it up on the forum once we are done with the show. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a newscast. I know. Back to you, Josh. Oh, speaking of. So real quick, I make coffee for us every morning and we posted about this on the forum and I, I've never been on a private jet ever in my entire life. And I really want to. So I've decided that I'm starting a private jet fund. I'm not talking about buying one. I'm just talking about. Do you hear yourself? Yeah, I right do. Now? Yeah, I do. I'm not talking about buying one. I'm talking about like a shared one so that I can at least just like go one time. Just one time. I just want to go one time. So I've been putting a tip jar out <laughs> every morning when I make Josh's coffee. And sometimes he only tips me a dollar. Sometimes it's two dollars. So then today he said, I only have a 20. So I was like, take a penny, leave a penny. Same concept. Leave the 20. Take the couple dollars that you've left me. I think that's fair. And he's like, no, I'll just leave a 20. And then that'll be your tip for the next 10 days. And I think that's crap. I'd like to hear what you guys think. Go on. And I even was nice. I was like. couple things. First of all, I even said like, Josh. You, like I called out his name. I even things. said like, thank you. I said, tips are not um, expected, but certainly appreciated. Okay, you just said it. Tips are not expected. Maybe give better service. Okay. Um, great service. Tried to make a little let, design let in the frothy milk for you and everything. Let me explain a couple things. Go for it. I will be based on me being your only customer. I will I, be 267 by the time you can afford a private I know. jet from these. And tips. the worst part is I'm just, you're just tipping me with our money, and but still second of all, JB Cobb said about multitasking. As I said, while you're play che checkers, I'm playing chess. Yeah. Which is what? Don't worry. What, what's the, what's the end game here for you? making sure people understand the truth. What's the it's truth? It's all about the truth. That I make you coffee every no, morning? this has nothing to do with that conversation. Two things I said. You were first. He was second. I responded to two things. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. Um, War games. <laughs> so I was talking to you, this is going back two or three months ago, uh -huh. about an idea I had. And you said, uh, it could be good. It could also be a little weird. Okay, but I'm trying to remember what this is now. I'm I said notes. I wanted to crowdsource. Oh yeah, a tour player. Yeah, not for any recognition for THP. I don't really care about that. No, I really don't. Listen, based on the the talent I was looking at, there's no recognition anyway. Mm -hmm. But I thought it would be cool. And you said maybe it could be weird. It based on the comments of who the swing coach is, it'd probably be weird here too. Right. Uh, but I, I said to Morgan that I thought it would be really neat. All these girls playing on the Epson tour, which for those that don't follow the LPGA, the Epson tour is their corn fairy tour uh -huh. or even the Symmetra tour, which is a step below that. It's expensive. Yeah. Like it tens of thousands of dollars a year yeah. to, to complete this. I don't think there's an ROI on that. And I said, I thought it would be cool if we crowdsourced it and got, their entries covered for the year. And in return, they thank THP. It wasn't about THP. It was about the THPers. Right. So I'm talking to one of the manufacturers who works with one of these young women. He, this is a brilliant idea. I love this idea, blah, blah, blah. And I said, we're not going to do it. Yeah. And he said, why not? And I said, well, here's the deal. 
I reached out to one of them and I was referred to some third party service that was doing this, I guess, but trying to raise millions of dollars as this big fund of money to pay for a bunch of these athletes to do it. Commendable in theory. I think it's a little over the top for what the necessary funds were. Sure. Personally, I think the take there is a little higher. I don't want to take any. Right. I want to give it straight to them for the expenses. Right. But, and and I saw somebody in the comments say THP logo on the bagger hat. I'm not looking for that. Right. You know, I, I want this to be about the THPers, not about THP. Somebody said no one else will touch Bryson. How expensive could he be? <laughs> More than they want to crowdsource. Stupid expensive. I, I'll, I'll put it that way. Yeah. But I thought it was a neat idea, and I'd love to hear from people not going the, yeah, I'll sponsor page. Yeah. We're not talking page we're, level. Yeah. yeah. We're talking about, well, this, these people would beat page, but yeah. Um, yes, I know what you mean. Yes. I'm, I'm talking about Symmetra or Epson tour or low-level men's tour or whatever, helping an athlete <laughs> get there. A golfer. What's that? Adopt a golfer. Yeah. And helping a golfer try to achieve their goals being something to follow as the community as they play each week. Right. Uh, the reason Ep Epson came into my head was they do that road to the LPGA on the golf channel. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see how the tournaments play out. It's kind of done. I'll call it documentary style. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I thought it would be really neat. But again, I have no idea. I'm putting it out to you guys since it would be crowdsourced. Is it something they that the audience thinks is a fun, cool idea? If so, let's talk about it further internally. And how we could make it work. Um, I guess we'd have to start a thread maybe. Yeah. And just ask people. Yeah. And I'm asking people here. Leave yeah. us a comment. Uh, leave us a comment after the show ends. So we can see it in the YouTube comments. Not through the super chat. If it's something you think would be cool. Whether you have financial abilities or not. Mm -hmm. Whether you think it would be cool or not. So I, I think it's a pretty neat idea. But obviously it's up to the community. Absolutely. Um, THP or question. If Nike were still around... Who is running it and would they be successful? Or if Nike were to jump back in, let's say. Uh, that's a really good question. If Nike Golf from a hard goods segment was still around, I'll give you two names I think would probably be running it. You should probably explain what hard goods are while we know. Oh, okay. So uh, the, actual, excuse me, the actual equipment, you know, not golf balls, mm -hmm. not apparel. Just so people understand. Shoes. Yeah. The first... Uh, you guys, if you listen to Off Course, just heard from him, Mike Pye. Mike Pye was, I want to say, senior VP of marketing there. Uh, it very well could have been him. What's that? Nothing. What's so funny? Nothing's funny. You're laughing across the table from me. I'm not. I'm smiling. Okay. Um, so I, I would say he would be one of them. The other one would be Nate Radcliffe. Nate uh, ran R&D there, uh, originally from Cleveland Golf. Mm -hmm. Ironically enough, both of them. Came Cleveland. from Cleveland. Um, so Nate actually still works at Nike. Uh, if he's watching, hey, Nate, haven't talked to you in a little bit. Um, he would be another name that would come to mind. Uh, I, I, I'm i not saying it's out of the question for them to jump back in either. I don't think it would happen I after selling it... off everything down yeah, south. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, it would be interesting. And those are the two names that I would think, assuming they came from the existing pool of talent. If it was somebody from the outside, um. I think that uh, you could find some pretty high level talent there too. So that's my thought process. Now you have a rant. I have tons of them, but you have a rant for this week. I do. I have to remember which rants because I have notes on a couple. Oh yes, this is a good one. All right. This is a, a really good one. And please don't be this person. Have you ever started to have a conversation with somebody and then you're done with the conversation with that person and then they just stare at you? They have nothing left to say. You've ended the conversation. Like it's clear you've ended the conversation and they're just staring at you. So now there's this weird, awkward, dead silence. That three second stare. It's super uncomfortable. And now you're like, okay, I think maybe I have to say something else. And now all of a sudden you're just rambling on about nonsense and you just want this person to go away. Don't be that person. I really, really don't like that person. So that is my rant. Don't be the starer. Don't be that person. Take the cues. The conversation is over. Walk away. 
I saw somebody in the comments said my coworker all the time. Oh my God, I would probably quit my job. It's super annoying, it right? Is. Like you guys know what I'm talking about too. Like it's so, it's so awkward. It makes you feel so uncomfortable. If we come back to this show next week and you're angry at me, you don't know why. They're just going to say, were you just staring at <laughs> right. her? Or, or maybe you're pre-annoyed. Remember that? Right, exactly. Yeah. Ago? I would be pre-annoyed at the people that I know. Or if I'm having a conversation with, I know a person that's like that already. I'm already pretty annoyed having that conversation. So I shouldn't be staring at you. <laughs> Cause I know. Yeah. Is it worse when you do that or when you look at look, like the, like the, the old, what was the, uh, the old salesman's trick, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, there are people here who want to know about the granddaddy contest mm -hmm. and it's probably time. Is it time? We need to get some sound effects. I mean, we have them. Just I know like we got to figure it all out. Yeah. Maybe we need a new system here. We have one that uh, we have three cameras. for those that wanted to know. I don't really know if anybody gives a shit, but there's three cameras set up mm -hmm. here. We have down the line that you're seeing right now. There's one that goes strictly to me. That would be this that was one right over here. There's one that goes strictly to Morgan. That would be this one, which is this one. There's a light way up here. And down that there. one was an expensive light. <laughs> there's a light right over here. There's a light down there. There's two more lights behind me here. Oh, wait, Those are the accent our, lights. We our, didn't use our, our filler lights no. here this time for the colors. But I feel like we need another one that hooks into a separate computer that could play video clips for our audience because I think that there's yeah. a couple things. Like, you know, we didn't even touch on Tech Studio 2.0 this week. No, we didn't. Um, we're going to say that for next week because I got an idea about that. Oh, okay. Maybe a little pick your prize. Oh, I like that. And maybe do a tour of it while we're there. People ask what's in the drawers and things like that. So we can kind of You're going to have to clean those out. Most then. of them are pretty good. Yeah. The one bin is. Yeah. Just have like um, a fuzz like fly at my face. So yeah, we have a granddaddy contest and the granddaddy is the greatest of them all. That's mm -hmm. why it's called the granddaddy. It is. You're going to win a free trip. You're going to win a new set of clubs. You're mm -hmm. going to win a fitting by the same fitting by the tour players. You're going to play a course that nobody should get to play. Mm -hmm. Very private. You are going to do so against the people who designed the clubs and brought them to market. And it's an all access pass to everything because it is free. Yes. Including travel. All free. All free. Albatross Club members only. For those that are listening that don't know about our Albatross Club, that was easy for me to say. <laughs> uh, let me just say it's a community drive we do each year. That's a campaign that goes to St. Jude. Yes. And each year... It costs right around $35. 36 this year. Yeah, $35.95. Um, and we donate money as the community, not in the name of Morgan and I, but in the name of the THP community to St. Jude. And we do so by buying bricks. Yes. For people who say, oh, you're just pocketing the money. No, you, you can. You can literally, we hope you never have to, no, but, but you can go to St. Jude and, yeah. and see the bricks. We yeah. have a lot of them. Yes, exactly. And it literally says like in the name of the THP community or yeah. you know, we change it and it has like each year on there. And we do three bricks each year and we're humbled with the fact that we've been able to do this every year. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's so humbling. But if you're a member of THP and you have the means, you know, not everybody has an extra yeah, $36 no obligation. lying around, but if you do join the club, it's not money that betters our lives, no. but it betters somebody's life. I also want to make sure people understand it is a calendar year, not yes. a January this, through December. Yes. So at the end of December, it'll reset. And then we start it again. Well, actually we usually, we usually start started October ish. Yeah. In case you want to do that, but, but it, you have it, you have yes. your membership through the end of December. Um, but the granddaddy is for this. All our events are exclusive to Albatross Club members. Correct. We do that for a lot of different reasons, but it, it's our campaign drive, I guess you would call it for lack of a better term. Yes, we did do Folds of Honor one year. We also did some animal uh, rescues. Yeah, We've done we a did couple a couple of Humane different Society things. one year. And there's a chance we change that sometime in the future where if a animal rescue that we know needs help, we could do a campaign drive for that Agreed. or things like that. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest reasons, sorry, I cut you off, but we really like St. Jude one, because it's just an incredible organization, but two, because we can do the visible bricks because we have so many people who are the, Oh yeah. You're just keeping the money. Yeah. We're it's not. physical, literal proof on the ground. You can go there and see it. That shows that we and really do donate it, the money. People can see what's donated. They, yeah. They, if they see the bricks, they know what the they, bricks cost. Yeah. They like it's exactly. not hard, and yeah. we are honored that yes. our members help us. Do oh my this gosh, everything. absolutely. Um, if if we were counting on Albatross Club members to do this year in and year out, um, we wouldn't be doing what we do no it, that's not our business model it never will be no it is but about, we are incredibly grateful yeah it is all about a drive for something that we care about absolutely um but back to the granddaddy contest 
it's we've watched this Odyssey putter thing go kind of crazy. Being that the granddaddy is with Callaway, we thought let's do something kind of cool around Odyssey this week. We get these comments. I, I started a thread on the forum yesterday about names of products mm -hmm. and drivers used to have the coolest names, the killer whale, the boom, boom. I had the judge by founders club because I wanted to be a little different founders club back then wasn't a retail store in Michigan that owned the name. It was a cool product line. Uh, the howitzer, the Tommy gun, obviously big Bertha. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, some of the companies still get creative golf clap. Kudos to them. Other ones go alphanumeric. I was going to say numbers. That's shitty because they're afraid of intellectual property and copyright. Sometimes I get it, hard, but no, that's, that's crap. Get, <laughs> get creative. Hire some creative people. Make a name. Um, we want you to come up with a name. And this contest will drop on the forum on Friday. This Friday. This Friday. So you have a couple days to think about it. Matt, you know what? No, no, I'm sorry. It's Thursday. You have uh, one day to think about one it. One day. But the contest is going to stay open for a week. Um. So you can get really creative on yeah. your 4th of July celebration. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Here's what I will say about the contest. We want you to create a name of a putter, an Odyssey putter. Now, you're not going to create the putter. So it could be the name of a putter. It could be the name of a putter line, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But there's a catch. It's a big catch. Number one, there has to be a name. We don't want... Uh, the number seven. Yeah, we don't number, want J3L no. number no. 23. We, we don't want that. We want a name of a putter. Now, you can get creative with spelling. Mm -hmm. Make it fun. You could make up a name. Yeah. The the Voltron or, you know, the Co-Crack. That's a person's name. But yeah. you can make up anything you want. Have an explanation of why you're naming it that. But here's the catch. It can't be something that's already been used. We're not asking you to go through... And search copyright. Yeah, to go through the files. Yeah, copyright trademarks. Yeah, and intellectual property. But get creative enough to where you're not going to call it rogue. Yeah, or you're not going to call it spider paradigm. Or, yeah, or, yeah. Get creative enough to where it's a little different. If you come up with something good, because this is voted on, it's not random. Mm -hmm. There's going to be five people who vote on this, and we want you to name the next Odyssey putter. Now, keep in mind. This is not going to be the name of an Odyssey putter. Right. No, no, no. They no. have no idea we're doing this yeah, contest. This is not like some contest where like you get to name the next actual Odyssey putter. And people don't post your thoughts on here because if you post them, then someone's going to steal yeah. it. And that's the other thing. If the first one who po – like let's just say three people are going to call it uh, Rose. Right. The first one who posts that they're calling their putter Rose and the reason why, that would be the Rose that would count. First of all, Ooh, yeah, that's tough. Nobody call their putter rose. Let's start with that. No, that's not a very get good really name. creative. Yeah, get creative. Yeah, uh, and we'll go from there. Somebody asked in the comments, "Will Odyssey own the name?" No, no. Um, I'm not trademarking anything, so nobody's going to own it. You might own it if you want to trademark it. Uh, I, I don't think anybody really wants to do that. So that's the contest. It'll drop tomorrow. Have fun with it. Get creative on it, and you could be winning this free trip. Uh, that's going to be awesome. Uh, we are back next week. Yes. We are not going to go on the holiday. No. So uh, it'll be later in the week, yes. either Wednesday or Thursday of next week. We'll be live. Maybe we do something pretty cool. I'm throwing out a little teaser. If you guys want us to do a, oh, I'll almost call it mobile. I don't know if we can pull this off. We're going to try. <laughs> Where we go day. into the tech studio and you can pick something to win or we do a video clip of the tech studio and you pick something to win. Yeah. Let us know in the comments after the show ends. Yeah. If you think that's a cool way to do a contest, let us know. Because if we do it mobile, it might get a little dizzying maybe. Maybe. A little we'll nauseous. See. But uh, uh, we'll find out. Post in the comments below if you want to win something cool next week and make it a contest where you get to pick the prize. I like it. We're back next week. We'll see you then, guys. Thanks, Bye, everybody. everybody.